It's Friday, Feedback Friday, the feedback day of the week. God, it's Feedback Friday, and I'm singing as I'm making sure no one's files are in the shot. They are not. They are just my, my messy, messy notes. It's been one of those weeks. Right now, I just want to take all the reminder papers I have and go, because <laughs> there's so many. Wow, this week was busy. Um, is it going to slow down next week? Looks not okay um it's guess stuff hasn't slowed down for summer yet awesome i mean bookings mean money uh there is some space uh based on some of the 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 comments this week uh there is some space if you want to sign up for uh leanna care session uh there is some space on thursday uh afternoon and evening my time so if you want to jump in, now's the time to do it. Uh, we did make, we've, we made our Patreon goal for the six supported sessions. Uh, thank you. Uh, I don't know when we did it um, because I've been, have, I've been so busy. I haven't looked. So thank you guys so much. Uh, let's do it again. This is a weekly thing. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. Um, um, uh, acronyms suck. Or I forget what somebody called it, actually. I never remember the proper name for this stuff because people don't know it. So I don't know it. So the not acronym for suck. People seem to like it. One person even made up a follow-up acronym, SWALLOW. And I was very amused. And I wrote it down. And now I can't find the paper I wrote it down on. But it was very clever. Uh, <laughs> this is how my brain's at. But I like when people pick up and run with those things because it means it landed. That makes me happy. But I've discovered a disconnect in things. And I am fascinated by the way shit goes wrong in the world. So, obviously, I, I talk to a lot of men in, in the Leanna Care stuff. Um, I seem to have a specialty. And there's a lot of stuff about dating that comes up. There's been a lot of stuff about dating right now because dating is not normal right now. It's just not normal. And the amount of money guys are supposed to spend on dating profiles and professional photos and all that stuff is like, oh my God, um, it's intense. Like so intense that somebody I know is thinking of moving to Toronto soon and she's a photographer. I'm like, advertise yourself for affordable, you know, dating profile pics. You'll never be out of work based on what I'm hearing. But it's interesting because I wanted to make sure I was right because not real girl. Um, so I asked real girls what their advice for dating is. And I will get to feedback from Manly Monday, but this is sort of a lead into it because it explains some of the anger. Um, but I asked, you know, the question was on Twitter. OK, ladies, I've had a ton of clients lately looking for advice regarding meeting women to date. These are good guys, gainfully employed, no obvious red flags, but they're shy. Advice. And so a lot of it was, you know, don't go out with the intent of meeting women. Do things because you actually find them interesting. Um, invest in yourself. Talk about what you're passionate about. Um, relax, you know, relax came up. And that, that was it. Now, this is accurate. This is what women are looking for. Someone who's chill. Um, but I talk to guys and they point out that it is really difficult for a heterosexual guy to relax around a woman he finds attractive. And that's true. You know, it's, and it, the thing is, it goes both ways. 
Um, it takes practice to be chill around very attractive people. You know, I've, I used to interview very beautiful women for a living. Um, fortunately, it wasn't my kind of preferred, um, <laughs> blazing from Twitch likes to punk me with Megan the Stallion pictures because weakness for Megan the Stallion. And so they like to send me pictures. So I'll go brain shutting down. And so we have this contradiction, this impossibility. And it's a tough one to get around. Um, you know, this is what people are paying thousands of dollars to use dating coaches to learn how to fake being relaxed. Because, I mean, you know, hey, that means you end up asking a lot of people you're only passively attracted to and you don't really care. You know, it and that's not fair to anybody involved. And and it, it is, you know, it's like a, it's like I have to do. It's like I have to do distress tolerance workshops of just being around beautiful women. <laughs> Could you imagine getting a grant for that? Like, um, and then again, everybody finds something else beautiful. So I'd have to match to type. This would be very expensive because uh, you have to pay the women to be the trainee on that one. Uh, but it's and this is something I think we can talk out. And, you know, relaxed, for me, I found it, the way I handled it, is to lean into it. This is a very attractive person. Isn't that great? Um, I get to be in their presence. They get to talk to me. Um, I get to talk to them. And, you know, very attractive people like to be attractive. That takes a lot of work. So giving them an honest compliment, you know, if somebody's got really like their nail game, their nail art game is fire, I will say so, you know, um, really distinct necklaces, little, little things, you know, um, people don't mind people like when you point out specific details when you mention effort and so you get kind of um you go into another place when you're focusing on details but I mean I've been on both sides of it because you know I've done art modeling and people are staring at you for, and they're supposed to be deliberate like wrinkly poses because those are hard but I think when you when you are involved with working with very attractive people, it does change how you react when that button gets pushed. Um, easy to say for regular people, right? And, and when we get into this sort of frustration thing, um... There's a lot of people who are getting taken by dating services. Um, and, and, you know, people not listening when they say, this is what I'm looking for. And it's not they're putting in the work and it's not they're not being clear. And, you know, all these systems that are designed to help minimize the awkwardness are just making it worse because they're not actually following the profiles because they don't have enough women. Right now, women are just not going back out yet. It'll happen, but in the meantime, how the heck can you go out and enjoy life when you're like so lonely? And that's where the social messaging comes in, right? There's being alone and then there's lonely. And lonely's real, um, but lonely isn't the you know about the status of having a girlfriend. 
and it is tough to sit with yourself and be comfortable with yourself and not get frustrated and you will get frustrated and that's fine feel the frustration and come back out of it but there's so much blame messaging on on straight cisgender men and you notice I didn't add white because you know a lot of the guys I'm hearing this stuff from aren't white it's just if you are a straight cisgender man and I'm not saying that I'm not saying that everybody is projecting this messaging. It's just um, there's enough everything's your fault messaging out there for guys to feel like the world is telling me everything's their fault. And it's not. It's just the loudest voices get heard. And no one's being no one's getting benefit from the way this stuff is being discussed right now. I talk a lot about how men are frustrated. Women are very frustrated too. Like, I totally get it. Um, I get sick of being what I read as condescension. Um, apparently, that's the way guys talk to each other. I don't talk to guys like that. I don't talk to, to women that way. Uh, but okay, if guys in their orbit are talking to each other, like I, I believe them, there's no reason they'd lie. Um, some don't, some admit they're being condescending. Um, but it's, everybody's angry. Everybody's walking around frustrated. And of course we're taking it on each other because, you know, the closest people are going to bear the brunt of that. And it sucks for everybody. And I think that maybe the best way to handle it is to start by going, it sucks for everybody. Like, you you got to realize, I hear people's deeply personal stories. Uh, it's now every day of the week. <laughs> I had to take people on Monday and Friday this week to fit everybody in. And, uh, you know, so you're not alone. And I think one of the things that we can take off the table is the idea that there's something wrong with someone or they're a loser or something if they don't have a certain amount of, you know, sexual experience by a certain age. Rest in peace, Sue Johansson. That one hurt. Uh, she was 93. She died this week. Um, for people who don't know, Sue Johansson was a, um, a public health nurse, I believe, that started in Don Mills. I, I worked in Don Mills. So it's a very, you know... Uh, economically underprivileged area. Um, but she started a show called Sex with Sue. And that's all I'm going to say about it because the last time I talked about Sue Johansson on YouTube, I got demonetized. So, uh, but a lot of my opinions about how to talk about sex, in other words, very bluntly and openly, came from that lady. So rest in peace, Sue Johansson. Um, and that's where we get to, you know, I, I, I'm going to be the Sue Johansson of feelings. We're just going to be real blunt about it because uh, I love it when somebody's been around a while and then like a fire gets lit under them and they sort of come out of their shell. And there's been some of that happening lately. But again, that's where I wanted to talk about anger because I would rather, you know, I don't. Be being angry is one thing. Being mean is another. And it's all about releasing it, first of all, in a healthy direction, not at the wrong person, but also, you know, in a controlled release instead of an explosion that goes everywhere. That's one of the things I, I, I work with people with. But there was this respectful disagreement in the comments on on Monday. And I like to reward respectful disagreements because it was about a topic. Like it was about a uh you know whether or not working anger out in therapy is enough and whether the message 
to, in this case, men, but everybody to just, you know, cart off your feelings and talk about it in therapy. Is that enough? And no, it's not enough. It's not, it's not, it's well-meaning, but the way the message lands is somebody who's been on the receiving end of that message. It stings and it diminishes and it, it minimizes. It's dismissive. It doesn't mean that it's intended that way. That's how it lands. Well, sometimes it is. Let's be fair. But one commenter, um, you know, uh, people said that the, the not knowing how to open up, not doing how to do it properly, and not having the chance to get good, you know, try, doesn't work, try, doesn't work, get better, get better, get better. That leads to the fear of opening up. Um you know, and people, and this is the comment just said, people, a lot of people say men need to do this in therapy and that's not exactly wrong, but still we can acknowledge that learning to open up through trial and error should be possible. And, uh, you know, another comment just said, I'd say do it in therapy is exactly wrong. And I'll explain his reasons, but here's what therapy can do. Therapy can help give you wordings. It can give you ways. I try to spend a lot of focus on making someone okay or helping someone be okay with not being okay. Explaining how I got okay with not being okay and how I learned to express, you know, that is not okay uh, without raising my voice at all or yelling or anything. There's no explosion. And when I do it, it still hits like a hammer. And I feel bad because I think I'm being gentle, but people have so little experience with someone stopping them and letting them know something is not okay before it's dire that people still get very upset. And, you know, hopefully having that experience of it not being the end of the world when somebody's going, okay, that wasn't fair. Don't do that. And that's it. You know? Um, but there, and, and I do that because I do believe very strongly that people need the chance to learn. And it's, if somebody isn't in the mood to be that chance, that is totally fair. Not everybody has to do it. I, you know, even if I'm like, oh, fuck, no. Like, even if I get up in someone's face like I do on Twitch, because uh, it's 20 people and me, 20 people on a small night. But so what? Like, it's over. It's over, you know, for me. It's there. I said my piece. I said a boundary. I said it's not okay. I explained why. For me, that's it. And that is not the experience a lot of people have. And I do think that that is something we can all do to take the pressure off. You know, if, if you don't like feeling bottled up all the time, be aware a lot of other people, especially, God, you know, neurodivergent people and I, I try not to say neurodivergent because I know it bothers people but it's lumping in uh autism ADHD uh OCD and then people like me who don't have an official official classification but it's like oh my god what is wrong with your brain uh I had a chat with a buddy of mine this week where he's like what is the number 13 taste like and I immediately said peanut butter and chicken um and he said, what does Paisley sound like? And I said, polka. And they were like, instant. And that is how we communicate. That's not normal. But that's my brain. And I know that I, you know, I'm not identifiable for anything. But um, even that's exhausting, dealing with neurotypical people. 
And, you know, you can say autistic and holistic, but that doesn't factor in people with ADHD. And ADHD is, you know, I work with so many people with these conditions. The more, you know, the more serious cases, yes, those are serious deficits. And, you know, the fact that there is medicine that works and, you know, learning systems at work, those, but more and more, you know, people with, people who are like, I hate the term high functioning, but, uh, you know, people less affected by, I, there's no good words. This is where we get into, ah, um, high functioning autistic people. It's, they feel a very important role in society. They enjoy doing things that other people don't enjoy doing. You know, um, when one client says, I uh, give me monotony, I just won't accept tedium. I butchered that quote. But, you know, like he can do the repetitive tasks again and again and again. He doesn't find that tedious. Certain things he finds tedious, he doesn't like those. It takes all kinds to make a world. We need different types of people. And the problem is our society has decided certain characteristics are better and certain characteristics are worse. And, and I'm not talking like out of control anger or anything like that. I'm talking about really, really, really liking trains. Okay. That's considered weird for some reason. And I don't think that's fair. Because how is really, really, really liking trains weird and really, really, really liking football not weird? This is artificial. Um, you know, um, the number of closet Warhammer fans that I've talked to, like, I, I'm like, that's awesome. It gives me new faith in humanity because, you know... I've always been like with Warhammer, it's like, yeah, it's, it's really fucking cool. It just looks really cool. But you can't say that because then people are like, oh, you're a stupid moron. And no, the Warhammer fans I know are the opposite of stupid morons. This is why talking is so important. Because the more people you talk to, trust me, I talk to a lot of people. I need a different place in my brain because, you know, the fact that somebody as introverted as me became an interviewer, like a communicator for a living, that's really fucking weird. My fascination of people overrode the, oh God, people are scary. And I mean, that that's why I want to pass things along because it, it isn't easy for me. Um... So there you have it. So let me get to the, the, the comments. This one, I was just, I read it multiple times because I'm like, okay. Uh, understanding how to open up and express one's feelings is a critical skill for existing as a human. I'm going to read that again because that was brilliantly put. Understanding how to open up and express one's feelings is a critical skill for existing as a human. As a society, we are supposed to teach everyone this when they are children. It is neither practical nor the correct approach in the long term to displace this social responsibility on the mental health system. I love all these sentences. It is not even reasonable to expect that those men who were raised as emotionally stunted boys would have the awareness to get into therapy and fix it. No more than you'd expect someone with broken legs to walk themselves to the hospital. If your femurs are snapped, your friends won't be able to fix them, but they'll probably help you get to where someone can. In theory, they don't have to do it, but we socially encourage this. In contrast, when it's one of the less glamorous mental health issues, we tend to encourage dropping you like a hot potato. Even when in truth your social circle probably cares more than that, just the overbearing pressure of that messaging will at the very least fuel that, fuel that fear in someone vulnerable. At a time when we're already more socially disconnected than ever, that's the last thing we need. It's actually absurd, 
As a progressive, I'm constantly told to support others in the abstract so long as they're hypothetical strangers grouped by some immutable characteristic. The moment I'm facing a real person with all the wrinkles and problems you get when you're interacting instead of contemplating an abstract collective, it's all run away, not your problem, they should go to therapy. Not to mention how callous and frankly classist it is to just blame someone sick for not getting sufficient health care, especially in a field like mental health where even us spoiled Europeans with our fancy schmancy human rights have to pay our way the whole way. Boom! <laughs> That was so good. I hope it's not condescending to say I'm proud of that comment. I'm so proud. That was excellent persuasive writing, commenter. Holy fucking shit, that was good. Like, claps for the comment. That it, Yes, there is a glamour to certain mental health issues. And there definitely is. Like, media has sucked at showing mentally healthy relationships. Um, I was actually kind of impressed, but I finally watched Strange World. Not at all what I expected. Disney fucked up the marketing on that movie. And they actually have three generations of very different men in a family. And, but they've created a world where normal is set differently. And it's really interesting. Um... Yeah, really fucked up the marketing on that one. It 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 got bogged down in something that a really was not an important detail and that's the whole point. Like the fact that the grandson is gay is just normal. It's not you know, I hate saying it's not in your face cuz to me too many heterosexual relationships are in your face and certainly too many lesbian relationships are way in your face. But, you know, um, uh, you know, the, the, it was a teenager and it was depicted appropriately in that it wasn't, it was, I like you, you like me. It wasn't, and I hate going here, but it wasn't sexualized. It was, you know, it wasn't the John Kent Superman arc. It was, yeah, it was Disney movie. It was right where it should be. It was really good. Um, so uh, somebody else said, um, and uh, I can agree that we are socially trained to conform to what is expected, especially to the point where certain dumbasses are shocked when you get angry or even explode when you can't bottle it up anymore. Or is that just me? Not just you. Have an outburst in the classroom. My response with staff was always, don't be cheeky. I'm sorry that happened to you, commenter. Being cheeky is trying to get a reaction that makes one laugh or deliberately have some sort of negative reaction, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I don't think getting overwhelmed, because that's what the blow up is, right? It's getting overwhelmed. That don't be cheeky is a dismissal of the intensity of that emotion, you know? Growing up, I didn't really fit in anywhere as well as at home. My brothers were nice when they wanted something, but would shove me in a corner and then abuse me for being antisocial. My games weren't mine, even if they were meant to be. My clothes were embarrassing unless they needed to wear something. I buy something to treat myself some snacks. I save them, come back home from school, college, half eaten with no regard to how I feel about it. I've developed selfish tendencies because of this. Can hardly blame you. I even had to take my Xbox 360 hard drive to school in my bag so they weren't in my room refusing to get out at the best of times. Wow. Okay. So no boundaries, right, in this family or threatening me with a beating because I just wanted to be alone to play my games. Even when I had money to myself, albeit from benefits due to my problems, they descended like a pack of ravenous vultures in a feeding frenzy. When I finally started sticking to saying no, I can't help but feel like I won especially since I never gave in. Even now I say no still because I know I won't get that money back. I can rightfully blame a specific person for my physical disabilities due to my brain damage. Fair. I can blame people for refusing to notice my autism when I was young. Fair. But it doesn't stop the hurt or the anger because of what happens because of them. Well said. I have an anger response with fear. Even just hearing the phrase, you know, in the middle of a sentence of explanation, pings that anger response. I do that. I apologize, commenter. I can control it. But in my head, I'm saying, 
if I would know, then why are you still explaining? Or let me guess, I should know because everyone does. I'm not a damn neurotypical. If I was never, if I was never properly taught, then how am I supposed to know? And that comment was like, oh, kick in the feels. Because I pepper my speech with you know and right because I was told I was too aggressive and blunt when I didn't do that. And they've actually found that women use more of those, what they call seeking agreement or seeking consensus statements than men do. And that is social training. I put those in my speech so that fewer people think I'm a bitch. Notice I don't expect zero people to think I'm a bitch. It's just not going to happen I have thoughts and opinions and it's this world. And so the fact that something I did, an an adaptation I made to make other people more comfortable makes this very nice person who's been through a lot actively uncomfortable. And he's not asking me to change anything. I know that. I think it's a he. Um, I just assume gender apologies. Um, but I mean, this is one of these things where this person was big enough to say it bothers me. I can control it. Not asking me to change actually makes me like, okay, I'm not, here's why I'm doing it. Commented. That's why. That's why I explained it, because it's like, I'm doing that as a, you know, you know, I just did it. You know, you know, I double, you know, oh my God, I quadruple, you know, ah, <laughs> you know, ah, <laughs> yeah, it's a tick. It's seeking consensus. It's like, you know what I mean, right? It's a, uh, to me, it's used as a, maybe I'm telling you something you already know. Maybe, not assume. And I realize when I'm talking more deliberately, I'll say, does that make sense? To the person right in front of me. I can't do that in a video. Maybe I will try. This comment has made me reconsider my relationship with you know. I mean, I already hate right. And I know that, that's something I think I hate it because it's something I do to make people more comfortable. I just sound like, right? It's like, right? Oh my God. You know, see, I hate it. And I think I hate it because I hate it. I have to do it. But hopefully the commenter got a bit of a laugh at my suffering here because now we're suffering together. We're suffering buddies. And holy shit, dude, dude, it's a gender neutral term. You went through a lot. And I, that's the thing. That's the thing about these triggers is they're very, very specific to the things you associate with the shit. And this ties back into the first commenter's complaints about progressivism that I absolutely share. I believe that we need to do more to level the playing field for, for, for people. And I really believe that one of the, one of the, you know, identity categories that, and it's not even, you know, Akila said on her channel that it's not calling it identity is wrong. Calling someone's race, religion, sexual orientation, gender identity, blah, 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 blah. These are not identity. Identity is individualized. These are social categories. Maybe I'll start calling them that from now on. Social categories. That's more accurate. Akilah's awesome. Watch her channel. Uh, But these social categories, the one that gets left out is disability and neuroatypicality. And this muddles the messaging so badly because you can't see that, you know, somebody has a mental illness. You can't see that. If somebody is autistic, you can't see that. If somebody has ADHD, you can't see that. 
you can figure it out in about 15 minutes of talking to someone. Um, but you can't see it. So, and, and the progressive movement is filled with people making instant judgments about people and communicating through that bigotry. And that is so wrong. I'm aware. And I, I think, you know, I consider myself progressive, but I'm not a joiner. I'm a punisher progressive. I don't join. I just go out and I like, you know, make a lot of people miserable, maybe out of revenge, but for a good cause. Um, but I, the punisher for me is it's from Marvel Civil War and Captain Team Cap and Ke- Team Iron Man were all up on their soapbox and, and Captain America, I think it was in, in uh, Cap's bunker where he's like, I don't actually agree with you. You, you just, you know, you're less irritating than the other side. You know, the other side's just pure fascist. So he didn't say that, but he was just like, I think you're all stupid, but I'm here. And that's how I feel in progressive circles. You know, conservative circles, I just don't last five minutes because I'm like, ah, you're wrong. Um, but it's almost like I hear from a lot of uh, black, brown, Asian and indigenous friends that they prefer their racism where they can see it. They prefer somebody be an absolutely flaming racist than them finding out they harbor these things because it hurts and they let them in and now it's scary. And that makes complete sense. And I do think that that there's a lack of consistency in progressive circles. And and my demand for consistency, and I hold myself to that, um, is what got me canceled from progressive circles. The fact that I won't give up having a brain because I happen to have huge boobs is what got me canceled from conservative circles. Not that I was ever there, but, you know, they come for me too. About my boobs. I wish I was kidding. Uh, but I, I, the, the hypocrisy in progressivism is something that has alienated a lot of people, and that's really real. And I don't know what to do about it other than have my own community where people can talk about this stuff. And that's why I really appreciate everyone's passion. I appreciate that, you know, that disagreement was purely on points. It wasn't personal and it didn't assume what anybody thought, you know, in that in that exchange back and forth. The first commenter, I think, was just giving points to people he agreed with and saying, well, that's not wrong. There's more we can do. The other commenter sort of picked up the baton and went, no, it's totally wrong. And that was actually a form of agreement. Um, and I, I do think we can not just get a lot of accomplished that way, but we can actually let people know that this, you know, if you're sick of all the extremes, this community is for you. And we are actually, actually accepting of different points of view and people who are different, as long as you're not an asshole. And we're going to hold us all, ourselves all accountable for this. And you, you'll notice I avoided saying, you know, almost completely in that little bit. And I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. Help us make our goal for the first week in July and happy Canada Day in the in Canada over the weekend. Happy 4th of July. That'll be Tuesday, but I'm sure people will be celebrating over the weekend. And in Europe, happy whatever formerly pagan festival is now a summer holiday for you too. Please share in the comments. Um, thanks for watching and have a great weekend.